Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Zoo Nerd, coming to you live from beautiful Los Angeles, California, for today's episode of Critter Chat. Now today we're going to be talking about an animal that many of us are possibly familiar with, but have you really ever seen one? And have you paid attention to how they act, what they do, and what they're capable of? We're talking today about the beaver. Today is International Day of the Beaver. Uh, there are two species of beavers, uh, one in North America that lives throughout most of Canada and most of the United States and into Mexico a bit. And then the other species of beaver is called the Eurasian beaver. It lives across most of Northern Europe um, and into Russia, parts of Asia. Um, they both have been at different points, um, almost wiped out, but they are both listed as stable populations now with the Eurasian beaver population continuing to grow. We'll talk a bit more about all of that in a moment. Let's first talk a little bit about what beavers look like and how they act. Um, so they're about 24 inches, so about two feet, up to about 40 inches. That's like this, this high <laughs> uh, in length. So they're between two feet and not quite four feet in length. That is usually just their body measurement with another eight to 12 inch tail on the end. And their tail is very, very different and unusual than any tail on any other kind of animal. Um, and it's pretty unique and serves very special purposes that we'll get into in a minute. Beavers can weigh about 50 pounds, uh, which means that they are a very good sized animal. Um, and their rear feet, their back feet, are webbed. So it has like skin folds in between each of the toes and that helps them to swim. So they are highly adapted to life in water. They can live um, usually 12 to 15 years um, with some beavers in the wild living into their early 20s. And in a zoo setting or a captive setting, uh, they have measured a couple living into their 30s. Again, they would live a little longer with medical care, no predators, no competition for food, um, and other resources. Uh, beavers typically live in a family group, so it's usually a mom and a dad, and then their babies from the current year, and their older kids from the previous year, or their yearling kits. A baby beaver is called a kit. Uh, they typically give birth to about two to four kits, um, usually in the spring. Um, and then those babies stay with them for up to two years, which is a pretty long time for um, some mammals and definitely for rodents. Beavers are rodents, so they're related to things like squirrels or hamsters or guinea pigs, but they are the second largest of all rodents by weight. Uh, the biggest rodent is a capybara that lives in South America, and they can get over 100 pounds, believe it or not. Uh, we'll do another episode about uh, other rodents in general, but since today is International Day of the Beaver, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk a bit about them. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they are... Oh, it's getting a little loud with this plane. See if they fly over a bit. Give them some moment. Beavers are very well adapted to living in a water environment. Um, they do come onto land, definitely. Um, to forage or to look for food um, and also to collect material to build their house and They are incredible builders um, They typically live in like slower deeper water and if that is not available, they make it happen um, They can do that by building a dam out of logs and branches and mud and that uh, causes the water to back up and form a pond um, that way the water gets deeper and the water starts to move slower and they get to enjoy the deeper water and it benefits pretty much any other animal that lives in their ecosystem or their habitat with them. Um, they are the engineers of the animal kingdom. They plan really well, they work really hard, and they do a lot to change their environment for their own betterment and for those other animals who live around them. Now they are herbivores or vegetarians. They eat the leaves, bark,
branches, twigs, and roots of different plants, and they also will eat plants that grow exclusively underwater. Um, they are 100% vegetarian, so they don't go after any other animals for their food. Um, and they can stay under breath, hold their breath for up to 15 minutes at a time. And during that time, they're capable of swimming almost half of a mile, um, which is really remarkable. If they're in a big body of water, a big lake, they can dive down and then swim a really long time underwater. If they felt threatened from a potential predator and needed to get away, they could do that. Now they are active year round, which is not true with all uh, rodents. Some rodents kind of hibernate or uh, lay low during the winter time. And the beavers, they don't totally do that. So if they live in a place that gets really cold, really snowy, um, and if their pond is gonna freeze over because it's so cold, they will cautiously prepare for that by storing a lot of food underwater in their pond or under their lodge, their little domed house that they build out of sticks. And they'll gather different branches and uh, some with leaves and stick those deep underwater to where they'll stay nice and cool and they'll be able to snack on those all winter long. Now during those winter months, they will typically stay either in their lodge or under the ice of their pond um, unless they really need more food and then they'll sometimes venture out in snowy conditions to cut down another tree. Now their ability to cut down a tree is pretty remarkable. They have really big teeth right in the front. They're, those front teeth are called incisors and on beavers those teeth grow continuously throughout their life. Uh, that is a typical trait of members of the rodent family. They usually have very long growing teeth or teeth that grow continuously um, to help aid them. So they use their teeth to chew on a lot of things. That's a typical rodent trait. And beavers use it to cut down trees. And they will cut down a whole tree and use the log part of it to make their dam or their house. And they'll eat the smaller branches. They'll eat the sticks, they'll eat the leaves, and they'll eat the bark off of most of that. So they are very, very adept at cutting down and eating their trees. And with those teeth, they are very able to bring down very big trees um, out in the forest in places where beavers live. I've seen them chew through stumps uh, pretty good size and be able to, to bring down a tree that's maybe 60 or 70 feet tall, um, which is pretty impressive work for an animal that's kind of on the smaller side. They're not huge, they're not small, they're medium sized. Um, they used to be uh, widespread, so they lived throughout much of North America. Um, there are early accounts of beavers in New York, uh, where the city is in Manhattan, um, and that Times Square actually used to be a beaver pond. So they were very prevalent when uh, Europeans first came to uh, North America. They were kind of all over the place. and. People during that time frame kind of figured out that uh, beaver fur or their pelt was very valuable. And we'll get into a little bit more of that in just a moment. Um, but their fur is naturally waterproof. So they have an oil gland in their body that they can secrete oil and put all over their fur. And that helps to keep them waterproof and dry um, while they're diving under the water. It also helps to keep them warm in the colder weather. They also have a lot of whiskers right up on their face, and those whiskers help them to detect things, especially if they're in murky or dark water and they're swimming around. Um, they have a very special eyelid that can close over their eye um, for underwater, and they're able to see underwater, and that talks, uh, that is called a nictating membrane. It's clear. So it goes over their eye, protects their eye underwater, and allows them to see without um, damaging their eye at all, which is pretty cool. Um, they also, we talked a little bit about their tail. Their tails are kind of big, flat, paddle-shaped, um, and they're not covered in hair. They're covered in like a scaly, leathery substance, um, and that can really help them steer as they're swimming. They'll also use it to warn other beavers if there's danger nearby. And they'll slap their tail on the water uh, to warn others if they feel threatened. 
And um, there, let's see, where were we? Large tails, swimming, slap against the water as a warning signal. Ah, and then of course they will store their food underwater in special pantries. Now, as I mentioned a little bit ago, they were very widespread over much of North America uh, before European settlers came. They were often revered or honored by the Native Americans who lived here. In fact, they considered them to be the sacred center of their ecosystem. Um, and that's because the beaver provided a pond and that provided water for other animals to live in and to drink. And they helped uh, maintain the forest around by eating the old trees and letting new trees grow. Um, so Native Americans highly respected and revered the beaver and it was a very important animal to many of them. Now when the European settlers came over, some of them knew what beavers were because beavers also lived in Europe. But uh, in many parts of Europe, by about uh, the 1600s or so, many of the beavers had been wiped out um, because of hunting and trapping. Because people wanted those fur pelts, the skin, the coat of the beaver uh, is naturally waterproof and could keep people very warm in cold weather. And so people started hunting and trapping beavers and using their uh, pelts as to make clothes. And so that, that became a big threat to beavers in the United States area um, when Europeans started coming. And they hunted and trapped beavers all across the country. And in fact, it was the fur trappers who first explored many parts of the Western United States. And a big portion of people moving west through uh, Oregon in specifically uh, was to hunt and trap beavers. And that was a very common thing that was being done throughout the 17 and 1800s. And by 1900, mo most beavers in both Europe and North America had pretty much been wiped out. And they were highly endangered at that time. Um, and there were some people who, who put limitations on hunting or trapping beavers at that time, particularly the state of Oregon, which is called the Beaver State. Um, banned beaver trapping from around 1899 through 1918. So for about 20 years, they said no more trapping beavers. Let's see if they can come back. And they did. Beavers actually have a really um, great population control. They kind of regulate their own population when their numbers are low and there's a lot of resources. Beavers seem to somehow have more babies. And though, because they live in a very protected area in their lodge, they usually can keep those babies safe until those babies grow up and go off on their own. So that helps their uh, population to naturally expand. And so with some uh, very limited regulations, the beaver populations have expanded and they are back throughout most of North America. Now they never fully disappeared and that's a good thing because they're very beneficial to the environment around them. Um, there are still threats for beavers, although they are bo uh, both listed, the North American population is listed as least concern and a stable population. And the European population is considered to be growing, but also non-threatened. Um, recently, the uh, country of Scotland has reintroduced beavers and that started in 2009. And through 2009 to 2016, it was considered a trial period um, to kind of see how beavers interacted with the landscape. Did they cause too much damage? Was it too difficult for beavers to survive in an area where people lived or worked or logged? And they found that it was a successful um, trial. And so they have now um, worked to increase the population of beavers in Scotland. And that is the first time a mammal has been reintroduced into the United Kingdom, which is pretty incredible. Um, they are a very complex uh, government system and for them to get the government regulations to pass to make that happen and get the community support, that's a big uh, project that they had to undertake for sure. But they've been very successful in doing that and the people of Scotland are very supportive of it. Now, um, beavers are very important 
for their ecosystem. Scientists have identified them as a keystone species. And what that means in science, if you think of an archway that humans build, the rock right at the top in the middle of the arch is called a keystone. And that's because in architecture, that rock, that stone is what holds the rest of the arch up. If you build both sides of the arch and put that stone in, it will be successful. If you take that stone out, both the sides fall in. And that is what a keystone species like the beaver can do with its ecosystem. So if you remove the beaver, all the animals who rely on that slower flowing water and on those deeper pooled ponds um, will start to suffer. And that's something that they've really been noticing along the Pacific Northwest. So in Washington, Oregon, and Northern California and parts of Canada where they have salmon spawning up rivers, they've noticed that the salmon can easily make it over a beaver dam because they, they have evolved to do so because those species both live there naturally. Um, but uh, when they get rid of beaver dams, there's no slow water places where salmon can lay their eggs and where the salmon babies have a chance to live or grow up in like deeper water where they're safe from other predators. And so in places where beaver populations are nice and healthy, they've noticed that the salmon and the other fish species can also be nice and healthy. And so there's a lot of work going on to try to help protect beavers because they're so important to other places and to other uh, animal species. Now beavers are widely recognized in um, several states as the state animal. So they are the state animal of the state of Oregon and New York State. And like I mentioned earlier, they used to be very uh, prolific even in what is now New York City. Uh, they are also the national animal of our neighbors north of here up in Canada. So shout out to Canada for recognizing the importance of the beaver. The beaver is um, featured on some of their state and national documents in those places and on some of the money in Canada as well. Uh, people are asking, what is the estimated population of beavers? Um, I couldn't find good information about this. In a lot of places, they are recognized as a nuisance or as a pest because they mess with the way that water flows. And if they're cutting down trees and flooding a small valley, if people live in that area, they get a little upset with it. And so then they try to take the beavers out. Um, the number I did see is that the estimated U.S. population is thought to be around 6 million animals, which is pretty impressive. Um, they do think it was probably closer to 60 million before Europeans arrived um, in North America. So 6 million sounds pretty good. That's a lot of beavers out there, uh, but definitely was once much, much larger. Um, people still hunt and trap beavers today. That happens quite often in a lot of places. I read a story of a woman who lives in a place in Oregon where she has a little stream on the back of her property and beavers came in and built a lodge there and she's very um, happy to see and have wildlife in her area. Um, and she was happy to see the beavers at first until they built the dam too high and it started to flood her house. And she thought that that would be a problem and she thought she could maybe make it work. And then it got to the point where her toilet wouldn't flush anymore. So then she called the wildlife services people to ask how to help figure this out. And the one time, uh, the one year that that happened, the wildlife services came and they trapped the beavers and took them and moved them to another spot. A couple years later, it happened to her again. And this time when she called wildlife services, they didn't return her call. And that's because there's a lawsuit going on in the state of Oregon to protect beavers, like I said, to help the salmon and other fish populations out. And so that is still under litigation or discussion in the state of Oregon. Um, but this woman who lived close to the beavers and they were now flooding her house, she made arrangements with some other people who came in and put in a uh, pipe through the beaver dam in a way that they could drop the water level. And so they could just lower the water level. The beavers still seemed to be happy there, but that way it wasn't flooding into her house. And so uh, there's ways to work around it and make it work out. 
Uh, somebody wants to know how do beavers build their dam? Um, it's a long process. It usually takes them most of a summer if they need to build a new dam, um, but they will start cutting down big trees and they cut them at an angle so that they all fall kind of the same direction. And if they can start blocking up the stream or the, the water that's flowing in that area, um, they will let the big trees kind of fall in the spot first, and then they will start cutting smaller trees and they'll carry those, they'll drag them with their teeth uh, to the spot that they need them. Then they'll start scooping up mud and bringing that. Um, sometimes they carry it on their tails, sometimes they carry it in their hands, um, and they'll bring mud over to help patch up the top parts in between the sticks, the branches and the leaves that they need to build their dam. Now, once their dam's built, they're not done. They have to then build a house and their house or lodge is usually a domed structure um, that is also made of logs and branches. And those are usually smaller logs because they have to swim out to the middle of the water to build that. That way they're safe from other predators uh, because they're surrounded by water. Um, and as they build their lodge, they usually leave a space um, in the very top where air can flow through that they that scientists call a chimney, um, but that helps to keep their lodge ventilated so that it doesn't get too stinky or that they can definitely get some fresh air um, during the winter months if they have to hole up in their lodge for a long time. Uh, let me see, there was another question here. Ah, where did I work before sheltering in place? I worked at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. Um, prior to that, I worked at the Los Angeles Zoo Prior to the Los Angeles Zoo, I worked at the Phoenix Zoo. And before I worked at the Phoenix Zoo, I volunteered at Utah's Hogel Zoo. So I've been in and around um, exotic animals uh, for quite a while, since 2006. Um, I'm also, as I call myself, a zoo nerd. I'm an animal nerd. This is something I've always been interested in, something I've always been learning. Um, special shout out to the Oregon Zoo. They have beavers who live at the Oregon Zoo and I'm going to post some great uh, videos up on the Facebook profile later today um, that shows a beaver dragging some logs around and it's one of the beavers from the Oregon Zoo. I'll also see if I can find um, any information of wild beavers building their dam and see if I can find a video that, that shows that in a quick uh, sequence. I've seen it in nature documentaries, but that's like an hour long thing that shows it. Um, I have seen beavers in the wild. I've been lucky to see them in multiple places um, and places where I didn't necessarily expect to see them sometimes. Uh, the most surprising was at uh, Lake Powell in Southern Utah. Um, I thought that would be way too warm for beavers, but we were very surprised uh, to have one swimming around our houseboat one day and smacking its tail on the water. Um, to try to scare us off and warn us that it was in the area. Um, one of my favorite encounters with beavers took place in Canada. We were canoeing on a river and as we were going through the river there were several adult beavers who came out towards us and were splashing uh, with their tails on the water to try to scare us off and also to warn I would assume their babies that there were people in the area and that they needed to be a little safe. I have seen some beavers in zoos as well, although I have never personally worked with any beavers. Beavers didn't ever live at any of the places I've worked, um, in, at least not in the time that I worked there. Uh, but I have seen beavers at the zoo in Berlin, so I've seen the Eurasian beaver as well, and they look very similar to each other. Um, on the graphic I posted earlier today on Instagram and Facebook, it um, details some of the differences of what, how they look between each other. Um, but beavers are fascinating animals, really industrious, they're very hard working, they work together, and they do a lot of good for their environment. So I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared today on our Critter Chat. And if you've enjoyed it, I encourage you to like, follow, subscribe, and share it with your family and friends. And until tomorrow, I will see you then. So take care, be happy, be safe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.